Joshua 22. And now we're going to begin the chapter. Troubles and trials and tribulations in amongst the children of Israel. And it begins with two and a half tribes that disobeyed God. They settled on the wrong side of the River Jordan. And this will start the disobedience of the land. Now we had disobedience in the wilderness. Now they're in the land. And Joshua called the Reubenites, the Gadites, and the half-tribe of Manasseh, and said unto them, Ye have kept all that Moses the servant of the Lord commanded you, and have obeyed my voice in all that I command you. There's obedience to man, to the preacher. Oh, we obey the preacher. You have not left your brethren these many days in this day unto this day, but have kept the charge of the commandment of the Lord your God. And God said, Listen, go over there and fight. And now the Lord your God has given you rest unto your brethren, as he promised them, in the land of Palestine, where the children of Israel to be in Canada, there's rest. As he promised them. Therefore now return ye, you shouldn't have to return, you should be in the land where you're supposed to be, and get you and your tents, and unto the land your possession, which Moses, the servant of the Lord, gave you, never says God gave it. Now we see before the land, the land that God promised to your fathers. The land that God promised to your fathers. In the book of Joshua, we see that God, even verse number uh, three, this is the land, this is the charge. Verse four, this is the rest. Reuben, Gedi, half tribe Manasseh, the land that Moses, the servant of the Lord, gave you on the other side of Jordan. Now you got to wonder, why didn't Joshua ever speak up? After Moses died, he said, listen, you know you guys, I know Moses gave you the land, but didn't God say for, this is the guy with Caleb. Let's go in there and conquer that land. Let's go. We can do it. And he watches two and a half tribes say, we're not going to do what God told us to do. Joshua never said anything. And we're going to see by the end of this chapter and continue the trouble that Joshua will have without speaking up. But they're not going to listen anyway. So verse 5, but take diligent heed to do the commandment of the law. Do the commandment and the law. God commands you to be on this side of Jordan, not the other side. So you already have not obeyed God, which Moses, the servant of the Lord, charged you to love the Lord your God, to walk in all his ways, uh, walk all his ways, you're supposed to be on this side of Jordan. To keep his commandments in the land that God promised Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. It's never the east side of the Jordan River. And to cleave unto him while you leave him, walk away from him, and serve him with all your heart and with all your soul. To love the Lord that God with all that heart, mind, and soul. That's what Joshua's was saying. That's the commandment. That's what Israel today claims to do. Jesus said there is you know, one commandment above all the commandments to love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, and soul. That's what Joshua is leaving them with. And to love your neighbor as yourself. And Joshua blessed them and sent them away. And they went unto their tents. Now to the one half tribe of Manasseh, Moses gave possession in Bashan, but unto the other half thereof gave Joshua among the brethren on this side of Jordan, westward. So there's half of the tribe of Manasseh, they're wrong. There's half of the tribe of Manasseh, they're right. And when Joshua sent them away also unto their tent, he then blessed them. And he spake unto them, saying, Return with much riches unto your tents, with very much cattle, with silver, with gold, with, and with brass, and with iron, with very much raiment, divide the spoil among your enemies with your brethren. 
And the children of Reuben and the children of Gad and the half tribe of Manasseh returned and departed from the children of Israel out of Shiloh. Again, that's where the tabernacle is. That's the center. That's where God is in the land. It's not Jerusalem yet. So they're gathered at Shiloh. They're at God. This would be the time to say, Joshua, wait a minute, stop. Priests, let's stand before the ark of God. Let's get on our knees and let's ask God if this is right. What do you think God would have said? But there's no prayer. There's no seeking God. And God's going to let him go. And so what you learn in chapter 22, as these two and a half tribes go across the border, go across the river, on the wrong side of the Jordan, well, I, if God don't want me to do it, he will stop me. Oh. Because he does not stop Joshua, and he does not st stop these tribes. Let's him go. And Reuben, the Gadites, and the half tribe of Manasseh will be the first Israelites to go into captivity. Then Israel north, and then Judah south. Out of Shiloh, which is in the land of Canaan. Now look at that. Look at look what the Holy Spirit. It's in the land where he's supposed to be. To go into the country of Gilead, to the land of their possession, whereof they were possessed. Yeah, they're possessed, all right. According to the word of the Lord by the hand of Moses. And when they came unto the borders of Jordan, that are in the land of Canaan, they're on the right side. Note that. They are on the right side. They come to the border. They have a choice to make. Are we continuing to go sin or are we going to do right? It's a choice. There's that Jordan River. It's not going to stop flowing like it did when they crossed. You're going to have to go through that river. I don't know by ferry, but in David's time, there's mentioned ferry boat. The land of Canaan, the children of Reuben, and the children of Gad, and the half tribe of Nath. Look how those, they, they keep going together. It's never just Reuben. It's never just Gad. It, and it's never just the half tribe of Manasseh. It is the three in one of doing wrong. So they are on the proper side of Jordan. They hadn't crossed it. Built there. At the borders of Jordan in the land of Canaan, they built there an altar. By Jordan. A great altar to see to. Where did they get the command for this? Where did they get the idea for this? Wait till you see what the reason is. There's already a memorial stone set by Joshua. On the proper side of the Jordan River. That's what God said to do. So they're leaving, and before they cross, they make an altar. And the children of Israel heard say, Behold, the children of Reuben and the children of Gad and the half tribe of Manasseh have built an altar over against the land of, of Canaan. They're in the land, in the borders of Jordan, at the passes of the children of Israel. At the passage of children of Israel, that looks like it's where the children of Israel crossed the first time. I may be wrong about that. Huh? And if that's the place, isn't there already 12 stones enough? And the law is written by them? There is no need to build an altar. It is in Shiloh. You left it. Once that brazen altar, once that incense altar is built, God never says build another one. It's there. And God says when, when that is built, that is the altar. Don't you dare burn your own sacrifices in your own land anymore. And I'll establish a place which he hasn't established yet, but Shiloh, where the, the men are to go three times a year. Land of Cain, the borders of Jordan, at the passage of children of Israel. And when the children of Israel heard it, the whole congregation of the children of Israel gathered themselves together at Shiloh. That's good. You would think that's good. But it's not. Let's go to church. Make sure you're in church Sunday morning. What well, if it's a bad church? 
What if it's a bad assembly? What if the assembly is not going to seek God at all? They're going to do their own thing. Is that possible? To go up to war against them. Gadites, Reubenites, Manassehites. And the children of Israel sent unto the children of Reuben, to the children of Gad, and the half tribe of Manasseh, unto the land of Gilead, that's on the other side, Phinehas, the son of Eliezer, and the priest. And with him ten princes of each tribe, of each chief house of the prince throughout all the tribes of Israel. And each one was the head of the house of the fathers among the thousands of Israel. And they came unto the children, where's the prayer? Where's seeking God? Where's the priest making an offering to God to say, what are we supposed to do? There's the pastor Finn has, why ain't they praying? Why are they not getting on their knees? Why are they not fasting? Why are they not tearing their garments? Why are they not casting uh, 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 rocks and dirts upon their heads and say, you know, repenting, something's wrong. God, help. E, what's that in your hand? It's a fruit. Can I have some? No calling upon God. And that's where we get in trouble and I do it. I don't call upon God. I'm not going to be the first one to pick, to pick out Finn and Haz and Joshua. I'm picking out myself. All the troubles I've gotten into my lifetime is because I did not seek God. And when I did, I went with the attention, God, you're going to prove of my plan here. Let's go. And God's up in heaven. I, okay, go ahead. Come on. They, verse 15, they came in the children of Reuben, the, the children of Gad, and to the half-tribe of Manasseh, unto the land of Gilead, the other side, and they spake with them, saying, Thus saith the whole congregation of the Lord. How about thus saith the Lord? So see, we went to church, and we had a voting, and this is how the congregation voted. Should be thus saith the Lord. I don't care what the congregation had to say. I see congregations and churches today are doing wrong. But you're not going to say nothing to them because it's our pastor and we love our pastor. Okay, fine. I'm going to shut up. I'm not going to say nothing else. And you sink your boat. What trespass is this that ye have committed against the Lord God of Israel to turn away this day from following the Lord? And that ye have, well, you've been turned away since you went on the wrong side, but let's keep going. And that ye have builded you an altar, that ye might rebel this day against the Lord. Now that's all good. You're wrong. You are doing wrong. Okay, Numbers 23 to 25. Is the iniquity of Peor too little for us? Now they're going to call history. They are afraid of what God's going to do because of what just happened. And they're calling to mind, did you remember what happened back there in our history? Do you remember what happened to death? The two little fours from which we are not cleansed unto this day. Christ has not shed his blood yet. And when they die, they will, if they die right in God, they go to Abraham's bosom. They don't go straight to heaven. They were forgiven, but they weren't pardoned unto the blood of Jesus Christ. Although there was a plague in the congregation of the Lord. Oh, you know, God's going to send us a plague for death, man. We are in trouble. What did you guys do? What did they do at Peor? The sins. But that ye must turn away this day from following the Lord. You guys are turning away. And it will be seeing ye rebelled today against the Lord that tomorrow he will be wroth with the whole congregation of Israel. Man, not only did God get angry with them that sin, he got angry with all of us. And they're going to give another illustration. But they are telling the children of Reuben, Gadites, and the Manassehites. You have sinned. Give them that much credit. 
notwithstanding, if the land of your possession be unclean, and it is, then pass ye over unto the land of the possession of the Lord. Now look at that. They're finally knocking into the heads of Reuben, Gad, and half tribe Manasseh. You don't belong over here. But it's kind of too late because they've already settled in. That's like telling someone, listen, if you keep doing this, you keep doing this, you keep doing this, you're going to get a disease. 99% sure what you're doing, you're going to get a disease. All right, they got the disease, and you come up, well, you know, if you, if, you already got it. You already went to the prevention rather than the treatment. Because the treatment will leave scars. The prevention is you can avoid it all. Wherein the Lord's tabernacle dwelleth, and take possession among us, which you were supposed to, but rebel not against the Lord, nor rebel against us. In building, that's the first time building shows up, you an altar. Now look at that. The first time building shows up is a reference to this false altar. And you know what, what I have seen that destroys churches more often? A building program. As it is, first time it shows up, it has that altar. A lot of churches, oh, we ain't got the money. We'll have to come up to the altar. Besides the altar of the Lord, you're our God. That's the one that's over in Shiloh. That's the proper one, guys. Now, example number two. Did not Achan, the son of Zariah, commit a trespass in the accursed thing? Yes, he did. And wrath fell on all the congregation of Israel. And that man perished not alone in his iniquity. We're going to die because of you. Joshua 6 through 7. Man, you guys are not only hazarding your lives, but you're hazarding our lives. They're scared. You say, well, how cruel it was what Lord did to Peor when he cast that javelin and killed that man and woman, and they were dropping dead of the plague. And here they took all Achan's family, they stoned them to death, and the soldiers were killed because of Achan's sin and all that. It made them fear God. Capital punishment will bring fear. Like, I better not do that. Now we get to verse 21. Here we go. Let's make a big, long, happy excuse for our sin. And that's all they do. Then the children of Reuben, the children of Gad, and half tribe Manasseh answered. They're in unity. They are in unity over their sin. And said unto the heads of the thousands, thousands of Israel. Man, this is some gathering people. I would say this would be about maybe like, if not your minor league baseball stadium, a thousands, if not maybe two of them, maybe a, a, a rock concert, hundreds maybe, and the Lord God of gods, that sounds so biased, doesn't it? The Lord God of gods. Why do you guys mention G-O-D-S? How about this Lord God? The Lord God of gods, again. Sounds like uh, Christian contemporary music. He knoweth. Oh yeah, he knoweth. He knows you guys are on the wrong side. That's what he knows. And Israel, he shall know. If it be in rebellion, it is. We know it is. Israel knows it is. Reuben, Gad, and Manasseh don't. Or if in trans transgression it is, against the Lord it is, save us not this day. No. Let fire come down and destroy us. Why would God waste his time? Let God kill us. You mean the God that says, I'm not willing that the... Uh, that the wicked perish, I'd rather have all be saved. 
that in his mercy and grace, he's not going to wipe you dead because he wiped you dead right now. You'd be in hell. That we have built us an altar. Oh, there's confession. And we have built us an altar to turn from following the Lord. Or if to offer thereon burnt offerings or meat offerings, or if it to be offering peace offerings thereon, let the Lord himself require it. See, the temptation's there. It came out of their mouth. They would not need to say that if it wasn't on their minds. It's still sin if it's sin. And if we're doing so wrong, let God stop it now. Yep. And what we learn from jo I was gonna say Genesis. Joshua chapter 22, what we learn is God will stop me if it's wrong. No, he won't. Because there will be no fire, there is no death this day. Verse 24. They're just making an excuse. So we know this great altar is a pattern of the brazen altar. The burnt offerings, the meat offerings, the peace offerings. But it is so humble for them to build an altar like the brazen altar that it is a great off altar to see we made it in garnish look how well it is and you know what you know what pre preachers will do when they have a visiting preacher they will pick them up at the airport the train station the bus station, and the first thing they will bring is you got to see the church even in the middle of the night, you got to see the church. My daughter is shaking her head because she's seen it. It's such a, and every church, it's a great church. I mean, they're a rotten church. Yeah. So, it's an altar like God's altar, but it's a great altar. So if it's a great altar to see, what are you saying about God's altar? You know that altar had blood, guts, animals torn open, animals dying, people crying. It stunk. Human, I mean human, whoa. Uh, animal flesh, animal fur, burning, animal claws, all parts of animals. That wasn't a pretty picture to see that altar. But look at ours. That's why God gags Revelation chapter 3. So, verse 24. And if, if, conditional, we have not rather done it for fear of this thing, saying, okay, this is why we did it. In time to come, our children might speak unto, I mean, your children might speak unto our children saying what have ye to do with the lord god of israel uh -oh. we're going to have a civil war here for the lord has made jordan a border between us and you no 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 moses did it It kept saying, Moses gave you that land. You asked for that land. God did not do it. And I've heard out many times out of a pulpit, God, no. And many times there are preacher stories. That I used to believe that the preacher said, and now I heard too many preachers say the same story. It is a sin that you just said it's God's fault. And that goes all the way back to the garden when, when God approached Adam and he said, Well, why'd you do it? The woman that thou gave us me. Things have not changed in 1400 years. And you get it today. People blame God for 
babies dying and everything else like that, and you forgot the wages of sin is death. You rebelled against God, and you got Moses to do it. It ain't God. And the Holy Spirit recorded that lie. For the Lord has made Jordan a border between. That is a lie, and it is recorded. Us and you. Ye children of Reuben, the children of Gad, ye have no part in the Lord. So shall your children make our children cease from fearing the Lord. They're blaming. Your children one day on that side of Jordan, which is the right side, are going to tell our children that's on the wrong side, you have no part in us. Stay over there. Well, let's look at verse 19 again. Notwithstanding, if the land your possession be unclean, then pass ye over unto our land, and we'll be all one big happy family. We've already read, Judah has enough land. We can take you. You can put the half tribe of Manasseh back to the full tribe of Manasseh. Isn't it odd that you have to keep having the Holy Spirit say half tribe of Manasseh? That's wrong. Come over on the right side is what I would say. But let's keep going, 26. Therefore we said, let us now prepare to build us an altar. Not for burnt offerings, nor for sacrifice. Really? Why'd you say that for? But that it may be a witness between us. You did it without their knowledge. <laughs> They only found out to the grapevine, to the apple tree, or however they heard. You did not call Joshua and them and say, hey, we're going to build this altar for us. No, no, you did it in secret. Now it's been revealed. And you and our generation after us, that we might do the, the service of the Lord before him with our burnt offering. And with our sacrifice, with our peace offering, to, the, I mean, that our children, that your children may not say to our children in the time to come, ye have no part in the Lord. You've been talking about that false altar, and there you just mentioned offering, peace offering, on that false altar. Kind of slip of the tongue there, uh-oh. The more a man talk, the more he get in trouble. Judges learn that. Judges learn, let the people talk, and if they're bad, they're going to sink themselves. So this altar is totally wrong. We got this unity of building. We didn't even know you were building it. You built it, then you crossed the river. We had to come across the river, find out what you just do. At least they could have built it on their side. Therefore said we that it shall be when they shall when they should say to us or to our generations in time to come that we may say again behold the pattern of the altar of the Lord which our fathers made not for burnt offerings nor for sacrifice but it is a witness between us and you so you just copied what the Lord's altar was Again, today, you know how many churches copy the ritual and the, and, the, and, the order, and the orders of what the church is supposed to do? And they do it in opposed to what God says how to do it. What's the witness? You guys are liars. You're idolaters. You can't be trusted. Verse 29. God forbid that we should rebel against the Lord. You just did. You just did by being where you are. You see what Moses did when he gave them these, these people this land? He separated the children of Israel. That's why it never says the land that God gave them. And the Lord sat back and said, listen, you didn't ask me nothing. You didn't pray to me. You didn't seek my guidance. I'll let you make a mess. That's called free will. And God's never going to stop you unless you seek him honestly. Say, God, help. But they never did that. 
to, to build an altar for burnt offering, for meat offerings, for sacrifice. How come they keep saying that? Besides the altar of the Lord our God. Oh, wait a minute. To build an altar besides the altar. Which altar came first? Theirs. The build an altar, that's their altar. Besides the altar of the Lord, that's God's altar. They put their altar first before God's altar. Guess where their priorities are? In verse 27, it says that we may do service to the Lord our God before him with our burnt offerings and our sacrifices and peace offerings. And that is talking about their altar. Yeah. And then, then in 28, it says more for burnt offerings. More. They're lying. They're, yeah. and they're, 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 One verse away from me. They, they keep switching back and forth. And liars will do that. We've dealt with enough of them. Before his tabernacle. Verse 30. And when Philip has the priests and the princes of the congregation and heads of the thousands of Israel which were with him heard the words of the children of Reuben and the children of Gad and the children of Manasseh speak, spake, it pleased them. There is no consulting with God one word or one prayer. They, the children of Gad, children of Reuben, Manasseh, deceived the children of Israel. <laughs> and it's sorry because now we start beginning the fall of Israel again. These tribes here, Manasseh, Gad, and Reuben, will first go into captivity. Israel will go into captivity for the golden calves that Jeroboam makes. Judah will go into captivity for all the gods that Solomon. And Phinehas, the son of Eliezer, the, the priest, said unto the children of Reuben, and the children of Gad, and children of Manasseh, This day we perceive that the Lord is among us. Because ye have not committed this trespass against the Lord. Now ye just deliver the children of Israel out of the hand of the Lord. And, uh, well, really? But yes, you need to go back in the law and find out about... Because first of all, those children of Israel are on the wrong side. Verse 32, If any has the son of Elias, the priest, and the priest returned unto the children of Reuben, and from the children of Gad, out of the land of Gilead, unto the land of Cana, to the children of Israel, and brought them word again. And the thing pleased the children of Israel. Oh, this is so pleasing. Poppycock. Well, we do in our church because it pleases the people. It pleases the worldly people that we do what we do. And the children of Israel blessed God. And did not intend to go up against them in battle. That would have been wrong. Just talk to them and have them come back over. To destroy the land wherein the children of Reuben and Gad dwell. Well, maybe you should have done that. You destroy their land, they would come back over where they belong. Now to finish it up. The children of Reuben and the children of Gad called the altar Ed. Where's God's altar have a name? They gave it a man's name. Ed means witness. <coughs> they named it. So you ever want to see how a Jehovah witness is, how well he knows the Bible, call him Ed. Call him all Ed. Call the women Ed. You say, why? Ed means witness. It's a witness. The witness that you sin. For it shall be a witness between us that the Lord is God by a false altar. In a false land. And everybody's happy. Well, let's look at one, one thing over here with Joshua. We'll, we'll come back to this a couple days, Lord willing. But Joshua 24, verse 
verse 20. We'll see the state of Israel. If you forsake the Lord and serve strange gods, then he will turn and do you hurt and consume you after that ye have done you good. All right, here's the fear of God. Well, remember that the, 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 the people came over to Reuben, Gad, and Manasseh, the fear of God. Peor, Naboth, the fear of God. Let fire come down and God destroy it. Did that ever happen? Verse 21, and the people said unto Joshua, Nay, but we will serve the Lord. Oh, it was for the Lord that we built that altar. And Joshua said unto the people, Ye are. Wow. Scripture is scripture. You are witnesses against yourselves. <laughs> oh, that ye have chosen you, the Lord, to serve him. Right, you've chosen the Lord. And they said, we are heads. We are witnesses. That's a funny, funny word to be used two chapters away. Try that one on Jehovah Witness. Now, therefore, put away, said he, Joshua, the strange gods, which are among you, among you, they're right there, and incline your heart unto the Lord God of Israel. And the people said unto Joshua, the Lord our God, isn't that what Manasseh, Gad, and all that said? We will serve, will we serve, and his voice we will obey. What is missing? They haven't put the guns away. So watch Joshua. He knows history. Joshua made a covenant with the people that day, set them a statue and an ordinance in Shechem. That's an interesting city. That's where Dino was raped. Where Jacob dwelt for a while. He didn't belong there. And Joshua wrote these words in the book of the law of God. Whoa! -ho! How do you know Joshua wrote he, verses 20 to 25? He just said Joshua wrote it. How's that? And took great stones and set it up there under an oak that was by the sanctuary of the Lord. What did Joshua put under that oak? He put great stones in the law. What did Jacob put under an oak? Idols. Idols and foreign gods that has spread through thanks to Rachel. There is no mention of Joshua taking any idols or idolatry or anything in burying. He buries a great stone and says, listen, you guys, you won't put it away. I'm going to put a stone here. Do you see something else in verse 26 that was interesting about a verse, our chapter tonight? 23. No, wait a minute. 22? Well, check carefully. Scripture with Scripture. What do you see in verse 26 that you saw tonight? And Joshua took a great stone. Wasn't their altar great to see? Wasn't their altar called Ed? It's almost like Joshua's being sarcastic. You guys got a big idol over there by the Jordan River, and you got a bunch of idols hanging around your neck right now. Manasseh and, and Gad and Reuben did not get rid of that idol. It's going, you guys better get rid of your idols. If not, I'm just going to do what our father Jacob did. But I can't bury your idols because you won't hand them over. And you know what the next book is? I know it's called Judges, but you know what it's called? It's called God's anger with Israel. He, he sends in all the enemies, and he delivers them with a judge. And then they go fall back when that judge dies, and they go back into their sin. And God sends the enemies again, and that happens throughout the whole book of Judges. Why? Oh, we just built this little altar over here. Isn't it nice, isn't it? Oh, we're just so happy you did that. Isn't it so great? And two chapters away, Joshua's like, you got to get rid of those gods. And right, no, we'll forget them. But we'll serve God, too. You see, we'll have the Christmas tree on the platform, but we serve God, and it's not really a bell bush. It, it's just decoration. 
you know, we'll bring the world into our church, but we'll just call it a youth rally. We'll just call it a, a vacation Bible. It's not really the world. It's us using Jesus and the world. And we'll give it a name. BBS, youth rally, bus. We'll give it a name. We got a name for it. And you know what God's name is if you're going to do it right? You're going to do what God wants you to do. God calls it, you ready for this name? Go in all the world and preach the gospel. That's what it is. What is it? 